Yeah. Hey guys, it's Fred and Sheila McCoy. We are at the Hatfield McCoy Museum in Liberty, Kentucky. You can go to fredmccoy.com, go to the top of the page, click on whatever you want to. Sheila is behind the camera. Hi guys, hope you're having a great day. And we was gonna do a story, just a short story on uh, Mr. Tom Dotson's book. Okay. On um, page 213, Tom Dotson writes, next to Preacher Ants Hatfield, Ellison Hatfield was the most respected in the Blackberry and Make Creek area. Well, I don't know. There must not have been a lot to choose from back in that day to be the most respected, if that's true. Mm -hmm. um, the Ellison Hatfield that uh, he's talking about that he's talking about is actually mm -hmm. the one that got stabbed by the McCoys and uh, got in the fight at the election ground. Okay. After he put his nose where it didn't belong. If you remember, Tolbert McCoy and Bad Elias got in a fight over some money, mm -hmm. and they were all drinking moonshine after it was over with. It, next day, it would have sobered up and probably been fine, but uh, after Tolbert and Bad Elias got through, Ellison Hatfield stood up and told Tolbert, or challenged him, why don't you try that on me? And that's what started the second fight. Mm -hmm. And... Um, that's when Ellison got stabbed and, and shot. Now, Tom Dotson says he's the most, second most respected man on Blackberry. He wasn't from Blackberry. Uh, Ellison was actually from West Virginia. So that's incorrect. Most respected man on Blackberry or around, well, um, I don't know. He had Cotton Top, Ellison Cotton Top Hatfield uh, mounts. He had him with his cousin his first cousin, Harriet Hatfield. Mm -hmm. Now, Harriet was the sister to Hogstill and Floyd. Okay. And her dad and Hogstill and Floyd's dad was John McCoy. Okay. And uh, if you'll remember, we've done a story on that, but Constable Floyd there on Blackberry, his father was George McCoy. Uh, so they always had the wrong picture of the George wrong McCoy fellows. George McCoy or? George Hatfield. Hatfield. Thank you, babe. I have a tendency to do that sometimes, guys. And she has to put things at the bottom of the screen and stuff. My mouth outruns my brain, but thanks. You're welcome. Uh, George McCoy was Constable Floyd's father. The George story Hatfield, sweetheart. Yeah. You said George McCoy. Did I do it again? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking ahead here. Yeah. Um, so anyway, Tom says that that's the second most respected man on Blackberry is Ellison Hatfield. Now, not only did he have... Ellison Cotton Top Mounts, or Hatfield Mounts with Harriet, his cousin, supposedly he had two other children with her, even after they were both married to other people. Um, I don't know about any of that. That's just, uh, I don't have no proof of that. Okay. But that has always, through the years, uh, been the story. That don't make it true, don't make it right, and I correct people for that. But if I'm wrong, or if you have anything on that, please... Fill us in, because that's actually come from some of the West Virginia Hatfields that should have known. Uh, second most respected man, Sheila, show them the court record up there. You may have done showed it to them. I've showed it a little bit. I this right here says out. Asa Peter McCoy, the plaintiff, and he's got charges against. Uh, let me read it down here. So I'll show you this name right here. <laughs> See if you recognize that name. Ellison, Ellison Hatfield. Yeah, Hatfield. I can see that. Yeah. That's the second most uh, best person on Blackberry Creek. The Pike County Court document is dated October the 2nd, 1867. The plaintiff is Asa P. McCoy. He says, that's this guy right here. Mm -hmm. He says that on the stated date, Henry Davis Jr., John, John's new... Moses Chafin and Ellison Hatfield together came to his home and by force and arms took from him four fat hogs weighing 800 pounds. Wow. Now, that's not 800 pounds apiece. That's, I Total guess, the weight. four of them. Yeah, 200 pounds apiece. Wow. Value at $10 per 100 pounds. Judgment was for the plaintiff for $80. 
Ellison Hatfield would have been 24 years old at the time the four pigs were stolen from Asa P. McCoy. So, in 1878, when Randall McCoy filed charges on Floyd Hatfield for stealing his pig, it wasn't the first time that a Hatfield, a West Virginia Hatfield, let's clear that up, mm -hmm. had been charged with stealing a McCoy's pig. As we have stated before, there's an old saying in police work, a person's past can often predict their future. Don't want to sound one-sided, but we checked hundreds of files, court files, and not one time did we find a charge of a McCoy stealing a Hatfield's pig, or anyone else's pig for that matter. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, that doesn't mean that we missed anything. Okay. So if you're out there and you like a challenge, look up the court records, see if you can find anywhere where a McCoy, a Kentucky McCoy especially, mm -hmm. ever stole anybody's pig, especially a West Virginia uh, pig. Okay. Um, but Mr. Dotson says that mm -hmm. this makes the preacher aunts, Hatfield Ellison was the most respected man that there was. And I, I don't know who he's comparing um, Ellison against. Again, that pig trial was 1867. Mm -hmm. Right there's the date, October the 2nd, 1867. Okay. And the next pig trial wasn't until 1878 when uh, Floyd Hatfield stole the pig from Randall McCoy. And we, we can go through here on several different um, things. You know, that's like Ellison uh, being on Blackberry on the election day. Mm -hmm. um, he was, um, he came over to Kentucky on election day. What was he doing on Blackberry on election day in 1882? Because he didn't vote in West Virginia. I mean, he didn't vote in Kentucky. They voted mm -hmm. in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'll tell you what he was doing there, just like what was going on. Our guess would be the same as Devil Lance and Johnson when they were charged in 1864 and 1886 for attempting to influence a voter and buying votes. So far, Basil Hatfield was the sheriff, Preacher Anse Hatfield the justice of the peace, and there was a Floyd Hatfield and a John Hatfield who were constables. Looks like even the Kentucky Hatfields knew how to win elections. And you know, again, had Devil Ants Hatfield, uh, Wall Hatfield, Ellison Hatfield, uh, not being at the Kentucky election, they couldn't vote in Kentucky. Right. They had no reason to have been there other than trying to influence the election, either through intimidation or buying votes. There's actual court documents where they were there trying to intimidate, or not at this election, but in 1864 and 18, uh, whatever it was there I just said, uh, 1886. Uh, so, um, once again, it's Fred and Sheila McCoy, and I guess you could call this a keeping it real video mm -hmm. because keeping Ellison it, Hatfield yeah. was not one of the most respected men on Blackberry Creek or even Make Creek. I know West Virginia had a lower tolerance or whatever you want to call it for crime or or something like that where they wasn't held to as high a standard as the Kentucky Hatfields or the Kentucky McCoys were. Uh, the West Virginians at that time were pretty rough characters and, um, and they lived up to that reputation. Mm -hmm. It's Fred and Sheila McCoy. Thanks for joining us. Catch you next time. Please like and subscribe and share. Whoa, what? What'd you say? <laughs> Here we go. Please like, subscribe, and share. Almost, Catch you on the next one. Almost forgot. <laughs> Bye. Thank you all.